untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white life gain aggro deck featuring Heliot Suncrowned as our commander. The 3 mana 5-5 five five legendary enchantment creature god is indestructible, but only turns into a creature as long as our devotion to white is at least 5, and whenever we gain life, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment we control. And for one and a white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. So an incredibly powerful commander that's also very difficult for the opponent to interact with. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our creatures, where of course we're going to have a ton of life gain synergy, starting out at one mana with Alsaid of Life's Bounty, a lifelinker that can also be sacrificed to give protection from the color of our choice until end of turn, Anointed Chorister, a lifelinker that can be pumped up later in the game, Beloved Princess, a lifelinker that's hard to block, Asper Sentinel is also quite synergistic with the plus one counters from Heliot, as it will increase the tax that the opponent has to pay whenever they cast a non-creature spell, otherwise we get to draw a card. Healer's Hawk, a lifelinker with flying. Hopeful Initiate, a 1-2 with training, so it picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever it attacks alongside a larger creature. And for two and a white, we can remove two plus one plus one counters from among creatures we control to destroy target artifact or enchantment, so also plays well with the counters from Heliod. Leon in Vanguard, a 1-1 that picks up plus 1 plus 1 and gains 1 life at the beginning of combat if we control 3 or more creatures. Lunark Veteran, a 1-1 that gains a life whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, can also be disturbed out of the graveyard for 2 mana. Sacred Cat, a 1-1 lifelinker that can be embalmed out of the graveyard, making another 1-1 lifelinking cat token. We've got Selfless Savior, which can be sacrificed to give one of our creatures indestructible until end of turn. Sarah Ascendant, a 1 1 life linker that gets plus 5 plus 5 and flying as long as we have 30 or more life. And in Historic Brawl, we start out at 25 life, so it doesn't take much for the Ascendant to get that bonus. We've got Soul Warden gaining 1 life whenever any other creature enters a battlefield, including the opponent's creatures. Soul Mender can tap to gain 1 life. Speaker of the Heavens is a 1 1 life linker with Vigilance that can tap to create a 4 4 white angel creature token, but we can only activate this if we have 32 or more life in Historic Brawl. Then Traveling Minister, a 1 1 that can tap to give a creature plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, as well as gaining 1 life. Then at 2 mana, there's a Voice of the Blast from Crimson Vow, incredibly powerful, a 2-2 that also adds to Devotion, and whenever we gain a life, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it. As long as we have four or more counters on it, it gains Flying and Vigilance, so we can speed up that process by putting counters on it with Heliod. And as long as it has 10 or more counters on it, it also has Indestructible. Then Daxo is a Blast by the Sun, has toughness equal to our devotion to white, and whenever another creature we control enters or dies, we gain one life. Thalia will tax non-creature spells by one mana, and since we are mostly a creature deck, it's gonna affect the opponent more than it affects us, and it's also gonna be a high-value target for removal. Skycliff Cleric can be played as a tap land, or can be a 1-3 that gains 2 when it enters. Intrepid Adversary, an awesome curve topper that we can sink a bunch of mana into to give our team plus 1 plus 1 for each Valor counter that costs 1 and a white when it enters, and then a 3-1 lifelinker as well. The Orator gains 1 life whenever another creature enters under our control. Hallowed Priest picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we gain life. The Initiate, a 3-1 that can exert to get plus 1, plus 3 and lifelink until end of turn. Then we've got Angel of Unity from Alchemy, a 1-3 flyer with lifelink, and when it enters or we cast a party spell, we can choose a party creature card in our hand to perpetually get plus one plus one, and of course party creatures mostly are going to be clerics in our deck. We've got Ambitious Farmhand, a 1-1 one -one that can search up a planes when it enters, and if we can enable Coven, can transform into the Seasoned Cathar, a 3-3 three -three with lifelink. Pride Mate, a 2-2 two -two that picks up a plus one counter whenever we gain life, and Tadanto Vanguard can make use of all that extra life by paying 4 life to make it indestructible until end of turn and can attack as a 3-1. Then at 3 mana we've got Angel of Vitality, which by default, since we start out at 25 life, will be a 4-4 flyer, saying whenever we gain life we gain that much life plus 1 instead. Ethereal Escort from Alchemy, a 3-3 lifelinker, that when it enters or attacks, can choose a card in our hand to perpetually gain lifelink. Righteous Valkyrie, a 2-4 flyer, that whenever another angel or cleric enters a battlefield under our control, we gain life equal to its toughness, and at 32 or more life, our creatures get plus 2 plus 2. 
Ranger Captain, a 3-3 that can be sacrificed to prevent the opponent from casting non-creature spells this turn, and can search up a 1-mana creature when it enters. Resplendent Angel, a 3-3 flyer, that whenever we gain 5 or more life, generates a 4-4 Angel token end of turn, and for 6 mana we can give it plus 2 plus 2 and lifelink to enable its own ability. We've got Skyclave Apparition as removal and Linden a 3-3 with Vigilance, adding a ton of Devotion, and whenever a white creature we control attacks, we also gain one life. Then at 4 mana, there's Twin Blade Paladin, a 3-3 that picks up a plus 1 counter whenever we gain life, and at 25 or more also has Double Strike. Ranger of Eos finds two 1-drops when it enters. Inquisitor Captain, a 3-3 Cleric with Vigilance, that will find another creature with mana value 3 or less and put it in play. We've got Attendant Healer, a 2-3, that generates a 1-1 white cat creature token whenever we gain life for the first time each turn. So if we can gain life in the opponent's turn, we can maybe make two cat tokens per turn cycle. And then at 5 mana, Angel of Destiny can be an alternate win condition if we gain enough life and it attacks. We've got Angel of Invention, which immediately pumps a team, and then a 2-1 with Fabricate 2, so we can either put two plus one counters on it or make two servo tokens. And then Crested Sunmare, a 5-5, making other horses we control indestructible, and at the beginning of each end step, including the opponent's end step, if we gain life this turn, create a 5-5 white horse creature token. Then going over the non-creature spells, we've got a bit of removal with Swords to Plowshares. Paladin class can eventually pump up our team while taxing the opponent in our turn, and can also eventually give our creatures double strike. Mana Tithe, a nice counter spell, which can catch the opponent off guard. Legion's Landing makes a 1-1 lifelinking token, and can transform into Aldanto the first fort if we attacked with three or more creatures, which we can then use as a nice mana sink. Curse of Silence can name the opponent's commander to make it too more expensive. Cleric class can also pick up plus one counters on our creatures whenever we gain life if we level it up, eventually reanimating a creature on level 3 while gaining life. Authority makes opposing creatures come into play tapped while gaining life, and a Johnny's Welcome and Enchantment that gains one life whenever we play a creature. Then at 2 mana there's Dawn of Hope, which is a nice mana sink, especially in control matchups, so we can draw cards whenever we gain life, and can also make life-linking soldier tokens. Griffin Airy makes a 2-2 Griffin token in our end step if we gained 3 or more life. Sanctify the an Artifact or Enchantment and gains 3, and Arcane Signet helpful for ramp. Then at 3 mana, the Book of Exalted Deeds makes a 3-3 Angel token in our end step if we gained 3 or more life, can also be exiled to put an Enlightened counter on one of our Angels that says we cannot lose the game and your opponents cannot win the game. Good Glorious Anthem to give the team plus 1 plus 1 also provides a nice bit of devotion that's difficult to interact with. Path of Bravery can also give the team plus 1 plus 1 if our life total is greater than our starting life total, and whenever one or more creatures we control attack, we gain life equal to the number of attacking creatures. Abiding Grace can either gain one life at the beginning of our end step, or return a creature card with mana value 1 from our graveyard to the battlefield. Then at 4 mana, Fate's Feathers, a nice removal spell that gains 4 when it enters. A Jani can add plus 1 counters to our creatures, or return a creature with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. The minus 7 ultimate, also a great life gain synergy. We've got a Jani Strength of the Pride, making a Pride Mate token with a minus 2, can gain life with the plus 1, and the 0 ability can also potentially wipe the opponent's board if we have at least 40 or more life in Historic Brawl. And then Sigarda Splendor, a nice card draw engine, alongside Cosmos Elixir, which also recently got a buff in Alchemy. And then the mana base, very straightforward, 34 basic planes, a Cave of the Frost Dragon as a creature land, and Castle Ardenvale can make additional 1-1 tokens, which synergize well with all the cards that gain one life when a creature enters, and then a Radiant Fountain which gains 2 when it enters the battlefield, so if we can hold it until after we play Heliod, we can maybe get a plus 1 counter out of it, but we cannot afford to play too many colorless lands, like maybe Faceless Haven, because we do need a lot of white mana for all these triple white cards like Book and Linden, so any colorless lands could potentially get in the way. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Muxus, Goblin Tribal, and this hand's not particularly great, don't expect too many artifacts or enchants, although that being said, our opponent might have some artifact ramp to get Muxus in place sooner, but Elixir not particularly powerful when our life total is going to be under pressure, Priest doesn't have a ton of ways to gain life. So I'm looking for something a little different. Mana Tithe could actually be quite effective at countering Muxus, so yeah, I like this a lot better. Turn 1 Ascendant, turn 2 Initiate, which is good at enabling Gryphon Airy. 
Hope to hit some land drops. Alright, there is a Mind Stone, so... Opponent ramping towards that Muxus. And really need land 3. Tundra Fumeral kills my Saracen. And a Catalyst Elemental. Alright, so next turn they could already play Muxus, which... I guess means... I uh, keep a Mana Tithe. Not gonna exert since I don't expect them to trade. Alright. That's a satisfying Mana Tithe. And now we get to play one of our three drops. And probably Righteous Valkyrie before Heliod's. And then next turn maybe Heliots and Exert the Initiate as well. And then by Exerting we could maybe get to 32 or more to give our team plus 2 plus 2. Ooh, a Krenko Mob Boss. That's quite threatening. So going over the top with our Flyers is going to be part of our plan. Playing Heliots doesn't have the five devotion so doesn't trigger a Janice welcome just yet so I could go for a Griffin airy exert instead and then the Janice welcome would trigger end of turn which would give us the Valkyrie bonus I think that's the plan here and then we'll have a nice army of flying creatures to apply pressure with so Muxus now costs 8 mana, so they're very far away. But Krenko is a scary card, and Prospector plus Krenko means they might be able to replay Muxus after all. Just make a few goblins, turn them into mana. Volley Veteran. They can activate Krenko in response to the trigger. Which would be enough to kill Valkyrie, so yeah. That was a very good turn for our opponents. We lose our plus two plus two bonus, only have the one griffin now that's attacking. So I'm no longer liking my chances. A Johnny only can use his zero ability if we have 40 or more life, which we're not close to. So what's the play? Probably still a Johnny. And then can make a token or I can plus to make a griffin. It's close here between making a token on the ground or an extra griffin in the air. If we make the token on the ground we also get an extra plus one counter right away. So we'll go with a ground token. True friends always stand by your side. Hit for two. Now they have to send a few goblins at a Jani. But yeah, Krenko is just going to go insane here. So there's Muxus. At least the goblins they hit weren't too scary. No way to give Muxus haste. But they can still cast all the goblins they have in hands if they sack goblins to the prospector. Just veteran going after a Jani. Yeah, we'll uh, save a Jani. And then would love land 5 to maybe play a Crested Sunmare. Traveling Minister instead. Alright, so Heliod's into Minister. So we get the life and the counter from Welcome. And then we want to start stacking counters onto our flyer. So 
so if I attack and exert the initiate, our opponent can still chump with the goblin and sacrifice it to the prospector to prevent a life gain. So I think I would rather plus here. That way we get another griffin end of turn. Grow the original one. And probably still exert in case our opponent doesn't make that play. Alright, they just let damage happen, so we got to gain a 4 life after all. And uh, yeah, another counter on Griffin. So if a Johnny somehow survives, we could use the zero ability next turn. But uh, I have my doubts. Can at least block Muxus with Heliots. Alright, looks like our opponent's out of answers for the Flyers and scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing a Valky Tybalt deck. So, probably a control deck, which means we want to try and find some artifacts and enchantments that are more difficult for the opponent to interact with as opposed to creatures, which can be swept away. Book of Exalted Deeds is a good example, although artifacts still more vulnerable than enchantments when facing Black Red. So could try and curve initiate into book, make a token. Is this good enough? It's close, of course Heliot is difficult to interact with. So maybe this is a keep. And then I guess we'll lead with Princess. Could also see Valky come out at two mana. Which is still probably a reason to play initiate as opposed to slow rolling it. It's going to be a Mind Stone, and Anthem is not bad. So, could go for Book and then Exert to make a token, or I can play Heliot and not Exert yet. So I can save that for next turn when we play Book. And then that's a little bit less vulnerable to a Sweeper as opposed to going Book, Exert, have our opponent wipe the board and basically not have anything going on. And I will diversify, put a counter on Princess. Alright, Firemind Vessel, so our opponent's going straight for Tybalt here. So we want to increase the pressure as much as possible. And hope there's no, like, extinction event next turn. This turn's on Heliods. And then Tybalt can minus on Heliot to exile it. So I'm thinking maybe put two counters on Princess so it can dodge like a three damage removal spell. And we get a token. So if they go for Tybalt, the Glorious Anthem probably is going to be quite effective. Alright, there's the Sweltering Suns. Glad I put the extra counter on Princess. Heliot's still a creature, but still indestructible. Opponent draws. And a Chainer's Edict. So I have to choose between Princess or Heliot's. So next turn Glorious Anthem would turn on Heliod again. But I could also just replay Heliod and attack with the Princess instead. I think it's better. So let's do that. Get another token, and then if they Tybalt exile one of my creatures, they're still dead to Glorious Anthem. But maybe they can double spell, get rid of multiple permanents. Alright, looks like that was good enough. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw, facing Sithis, Harvest's Hands, so an enchantment deck, and Sanctify is an answer to enchantments, so yeah, I'll keep. And turn one, so assuming our opponent plays Sithis next turn, I could Sanctify it right away, could get Voice of the Blast down first, probably have to kill it right away. And hopefully initiate actually also quite nice with uh, training. But given that I'm gonna kill Sithis, probably better to hit for one and gain one. And if they take a slower approach, I'm pretty happy because then we can maybe develop Voice of the Blast. Right, it's gonna be a Paladin class first. So now I'm happy to play Voice. And then next turn we can double spell. Sithis into maybe a one mana enchantment, Sanctum. So they can draw right away, get some value. And then probably get the hopeful initiate down, which can also destroy enchantments. So we drew. The right cards for the matchup, that's for sure. Ascendant grows up to a 6-6. Hope there's no sweeper. Prison Realm goes for Sarah Ascendant here. Can still free it with the initiate eventually. So yeah, that seems good. I can attack with a team. This we can use at instant speed. And then I'll still play a Corster. And this also doesn't interfere. So yeah, we'll wait. Calyx can exile something. Although I could destroy whatever they target here. So I could destroy the Sanctum to keep my Voice of the Blast around, or I could get my Sarah Ascendant back. I guess we'll destroy the Sanctum. Alright, and then now we'll attack. Can finish off Calyx, go face, and once again I'm gonna prioritize destroying the Prisoner Realm. And just keeping up the initiate's ability. Alright, GG's. Looks like the initiate got the job done. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Freyalis, Elf, Tribal. And what do we think of this hand? Dawn of Hope might be a little slow for this matchup. I do like the author cards for the most part, a so flyer can also apply a nice bit of pressure. So I'll try it. Don't expect Ascendant to have an easy time attacking early, so might be better off playing an Ajani's Welcome. Although that being said, it's not like playing Heliodon 3 is going to trigger the Welcome and give a counter to the Angel. But it would trigger off the Ascendant being played on turn 4. So maybe it's still worth it, assuming our opponent's going to have some early elves. But I guess we're also on the play. Close call. Ooh, a Soul Warden's excellence. So now I'm into Soul Warden plus Sarah Ascendant. Although if I play Angel, I can grow the Soul Warden too. So it's another tough decision. And then we can curve Heliod into Soul Warden plus Ascendance. Legion's Landing also, excellent. Alright, so I'm liking our chances a lot better now. In hindsight, playing Sarah Ascendant turn 1 might have worked out a little bit better. 
but this should still work out fine. So there's free Elise. I take no counsel with trespassers. And we should be able to stack quite a few counters onto the Angel. We blossom with nature's magic. Metallic Mimic on Elf. Step one, Soul Warden. And then we just want to make sure we can kill Freilis. And we're just popping off here. So that goes after the Planeswalker, that goes face. Yeah, Soul Warden, Saracenans are both pretty messed up in this format. If our opponent plays more creatures, we get more plus one counters. And now we can start stacking more counters onto our flyers. And Ferris does have reach. And a Blizzard Brawl. Not gonna do it here. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Narset of the Ancient Way, so Jeskai Control, a matchup where Cosmos Elixir could be very useful if we can resolve it as a card draw engine. Authority is not gonna do much, but at least it's difficult to interact with. And then Pride Mate for a little bit of pressure. So it's not a perfect hand, but uh, Cosmos Elixir could go a long way. And we've got a good curve, one, two, three, four. And Castle can also act as a mana sink. We'll play the Pride Mates. Doesn't seem like they have any counter spells. And next turn we'll attack and play Heliot. Ooh, Prismari Command. Glad they didn't wait to destroy the Cosmos Elixir. Opponent killing the Pride Mate before we could gain life. Ooh, and looks like they're a Dragon's Approach deck. Alright, so not your typical Narset control deck. Abiding Grace, probably worse than just playing Heliot. And the Dragon's Approach also means Cosmos Elixir is not guaranteed to draw cards immediately. So Narset can discard Dragon's Approach. The future, then but it looks like they just kept the uh, card in hand. So, yeah, I guess we'll play Elixir. And we'll keep the Dawn of Hope on top, since that's another potential card draw engine. Five mana for Sorcerer class, which can discard double dragon's approach, and then our opponent can actually cast it to uh, find a dragon. Alright, maybe they are out of dragon's approaches. But for now, we can Abiding Grace and Dawn of Hope. Could have also tried to draw an extra card with Dawn of Hope as opposed to going for Abiding Grace. Swords could be a nice answer to whatever dragon they want to cheat into play. Alright, there's a Dragon's Approach. Maybe a Velomachus Lore Holds. Yep, comes into play tapped, so not super effective with Authority. 
And now we can sort it. All right, and then I guess we'll play Ascendant. And that should also turn on Heliod. So we can attack for quite a bit of damage. And we'll take out Narset, I guess. Even masters make mistakes. And then gain a life. Pay two, put counter on ascendance. Alright, still have the swords to answer Velomachus. Might have wanted to play the swords before they got a chance to tap it for mana with the sorcerer class, but that's okay. Opponent's gonna level up, I guess in response I'll exile Velomachus. Right, opponent's gonna counter it, but at least Velomachus is now tapped. And our opponent concedes, yeah, they're in trouble. We've got a ton of pressure building up, can just replay the sword. And there we go, pretty unique deck from our opponent, but was no match for Heliod life gain. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand facing off against Zakama, so it's going to be a dedicated ramp deck. So we have to be pretty quick here to kill them before they get to 9 mana. Is this hand fast enough is a question. Yeah, I think with the two lifelinkers and two Heliots, assuming our opponent doesn't present any early blockers, it might be good enough. And then Adversary can eventually pump the team. Could even play a turn 2 Adversary to maybe hit a little bit harder. But I have to imagine we'll be able to play it with the extra mana eventually. And then picked up a Cleric here, so play as well with the Angel of Unity. So their opponents starting to ramp up their mana. They might also have a couple sweepers, so having Heliot as an indestructible enchantment is quite useful. Probably better to put counters on Angel. Also in case of damage based removal, 5 toughness is harder to deal with. Alright, Solemn for ramp and a blocker. So I could Fates Feathers here. Which would let me attack with the Alsaid. Attended healer, also an option. Or I could go for the Pumped Adversary. But then the Alsaid would still trade for Solemn. Will I need Fates Feathers for something else later is a question. Maybe not. Yeah, I guess we'll use it now. And then now, probably still on Angel. Just make a big flyer. Ooh, a Mirari's Wake to double their mana. That's uh, bad news. So next turn they can easily play Zakama, untap their lands and then use Zakama's abilities multiple times. No removal for Mirari's Wake in hand. So can I somehow kill my opponent is a question. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 Devotion. So Adversary would make it 5, would pump the team by 1. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I guess we have Xaxes here. Oof, definitely dodged a bullet there, since next turn it could have been game over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Volo, Guide to Monsters, which is a pretty scary commander once it's in play. Our deck doesn't have much removal, but Mana Tithe could answer it, so I'll try it. Might make it a little awkward if we can't play Heliod on 3, but have to keep up a counterspell instead. 
opponent could have a ram spell, in which case I already need to keep up mana tithe on turn two. Yeah, gross peril, so... Won't even be able to add any pressure to the board, but... Can possibly let Vola resolve when we have the opportunity to counter him. Opponents could still easily replay it at 6 mana, so only a temporary solution. And then now, do I want to play Heliot or do I want to double spell? I think going Daxos into Healer's Hawk is fine, because then next turn, when I play Heliot, it's already going to be a creature, which will trigger Daxos, giving me a counter right away. And we might be able to deal a bit more damage. But the other way around also could have worked. Mm, Gilded Goose. Alright, might as well play the tapped lands. Count from Princess so it doesn't trade. Yeah, I guess if we go Heliod last turn and this turn Daxos plus Hawk, we might have been able to deal slightly more damage. But this way we got an extra counter, I think. So our opponent can replay Volo, hopefully not play anything after. Migratory Greathorn's not bad. We'll give them a 3-4 flyer now. And a Pouncing Shore Shark can bounce Heliot, which is now a creature. That's okay, we can still replay Heliot and a 2-drop. So our opponent does seem to have a lot of mutate synergies. Thanks to Daxos and Heliod, we should be able to add some more counters to our creatures so they can attack. Princess cannot be blocked by the Great Horn, so two counters on Hawk is what we want. And Heliod into Adanto Vanguard or Farmhand will do that. Serpoint's just gonna attack with the Great Horn instead. Thalia, probably not incredibly impactful in this matchup but might still be better than the alternatives. And then I might want to diversify my plus one counters a little bit. Opponent replays Volo. 4 mana, 5 mana now, available, 1 card in hand. So hopefully no mutate creature. There's some other impactful creatures they could have with good entered battlefield abilities. Opponent passes instead. Alright, I could animate cave or play two more creatures to get more counters, which might be better. So I'll go with Vanguard. If they have a bounce spell, they might want to bounce in response, so don't think they have any instant speed mutation. So let's see here. Probably some more counters on Daxos. And then we can attack with a team, and our opponent's seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Yogmoth Thran Physician, which can take care of all these one toughness creatures quite easily. So I'm not the biggest fan of this opening hand. Also missing a land 3. Let's try a different approach. 
All right, this could work a little bit better. Do need to draw a few lands, but Swords as an answer to Yogmoth is important, and then Angel of Unity is a little sturdier. Can also pump up the Attended Healer. Turn on Duress, sadly. Gonna take away Swords or a Jani. Most likely Swords. And a Blood Chief's Thirst deals with the Alsaid. Alright, Curse of Silence can play that next turn to slow down Yogmoth by a few turns. Ooh. If that was a uh, Phyrexian Tower, I guess I would have gotten punished, but luckily just took a ball stronghold. So as much as I would like to play Heliod, don't think I can afford to let them play Ogmoth. So we'll name it. Probably no point in attacking given the 1 1 lifelinker on the other side. But now I've got a few options, like maybe a Jani and Minus, or Healer first to make a few chum blockers to better protect the Jani. So, still one turn away from playing Yogmoth. And then now. I could heal it, give something a lifelink. I could just empty my hands, which I also don't mind. And then uh, I guess we'll start with a Johnny Minus. And hope they can't kill my angel. And does attendant healer want to attack? I guess it could. One's gonna chump. Should I be concerned about a potential sweeper? I guess I'll hold the chorister. All right, looks like that was good enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Koma, Cosmo Serpent, a blue-green ramp deck. So it's all about being able to apply pressure early, so we can kill them before Koma comes down. Authority, probably not incredibly useful in a matchup. And the rest of my hands leaves a little bit to be desired, so let's take a mulligan. Is this better? Not really. Dawn of Hope seems too slow for the matchup, don't have a one-drop. No easy way to enable pride mates. Alright, this is uh, a little bit better. So I like the Chorister into Voice, Hallowed Priests. Sunmare is pretty far away, with only two lands, so that might be the card we need to bottom, sadly. And then Chorister into Voice of the Blessed is how we want to kick things off. And then next turn I can decide between Initiate plus Priest or Player or Commander. Which we can then turn into a creature on the following turn. So I'm kind of liking Heliot and then next turn maybe Orator into Initiate. And I'll uh, put an extra counter on Voice so next turn it can gain Flying and Vigilance as well. Legion's Landing is excellent too. Don't see any artifacts or enchantments we need to blow up, so Orator into Legion's Landing, and then I can still play the Initiate afterwards. And then... Guess I'll put the counter here for now, so we gain more life. 
and play an initiate. Spread out my counters a little bit, and our opponent scoops it up, so our mulligans pay it off. Alright. Well, Heliot in Historic Brawl is just a very powerful commander. Just make sure you've got a low curve, lots of lifelink synergies, and you can't really go wrong even if you're missing some of the rares and mythics from the deck. And as you may have noticed, we are approaching 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, so if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so. We've got something special planned for when we reach that milestone. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.